So I want to talk about giving the gift of Python. You guys think of Python as a gift? Yeah. It's a pretty great tool, right? How many of you are going to go home this holiday season? You're going to see more family, more friends, maybe more than you really want to. Most of you, I hope. You're looking at me kind of blankly. This is a great opportunity for you to give the gift of Python. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about how you do that. And it turns out, you know, very much like the previous speaker, it's typing for me. Don't have some telepathic link. Uh, but I'm using idle here. And the setup is actually pretty simple. You want to go to python.org. You want to download and install Python. How long should that take you? Five minutes. Tops, right? You want to start up Python's idle. Idle is a built-in editor. It's part of the Python standard lib. It should be very easy to get started. It is an ideal environment for someone first learning to program. It's really simple. That's why we use it. And then you want to use the built-in turtle module. The turtle module is also built into Python and is really fun to use. Don't get hung up on doing things the right way. This is your time to have fun with it. So use that star import. Do from turtle import star. And then do reset. And you will get this little turtle character. You see the triangle right in the middle of the screen? That is your turtle. You get to give the turtle commands. A lot of these commands are very primitive. Basic commands are things like go forward 100 pixels, turn right 90 degrees, go FD, FD is a shorthand for forward, turn right 90 degrees. And by stacking all these basic commands, one on top of the other, we can actually start making shapes. But it has a killer feature. You can actually undo when you make a mistake. This is something that beginners are going to love because they'll make mistakes all the time. What's kind of surprising is how quickly people get into this. Seriously, you show someone who has a little bit of interest, they know how to type, they know some basic algebra, and they will just start running with it. And so very quickly, you have to start showing them loops. You have to start showing them functions. One of the surprising things about Turtle is that it doesn't really come with many built-in shapes you get to make the built-in shapes. So you have an opportunity there to introduce functions. You'll introduce things like begin fill. This marks the beginning of your shape. You'll trace your little turtle around. It'll build something like a square, and then you'll call end fill. And when you call square, it goes and draws that shape and then fills it in. You can even start to introduce uh, some basic shapes like dots. And this is a great time to introduce Python's help function. So you don't need to go to a web browser. You don't need to buy them a book. Just show them that all from the power of Python's editor, all from the Python shell, you can do these things. Once you uh, do that, they'll start asking, well, how do I add color? How do I add interaction? How do I add uh, animation? And all of those things are actually really simple. In five to 10 lines of code, we can add all of those with Python's turtle. So here I'm going to draw a kind of present. This is just going to be four colorful squares stacked next to each other. I'm using the iter tool cycle method. That's going to cycle through these four strings. As I do so, I change the turtle's color. So it's a very state-based system. And as I change the turtle's color, I fill in a different square. So one square function becomes the red square function and the blue square function, the green square function. And we can kind of think of this as like a present. Now, the location system for Turtle is actually the same as what you learned in grade school. If you guys know the graphic system of most computers, they put the origin in the upper left-hand corner. That confuses a lot of beginners. So Turtle moves it to the middle of the screen. Very easy to work with. And you'll have to build primitives like lines. So you can control, is the turtle drawing a line or is it not? You can say, Turtle, lift up the pen, go to here, put down the pen, go to here. And as you compose those together, you can build very simple shapes like a triangle. Here, this is going to be my attempt at a Christmas tree. Mouse inputs are similarly pretty simple. You're going to make a function that responds to the mouse click. So I'm going to create a function called tap. It takes two parameters, x and y. That's the location that the person clicks. When they click that, we go there, and we make a dot. So now I can go ahead and decorate my Christmas tree. I'm going to assume that was for me. 
You can also respond to keyboard events. The trick with keyboard events is that you got to call listen. So there's an on key function that's going to hook up one of those functions to a particular key. I'm using lambdas here as a shortcut. You probably don't want to introduce lambdas in like the first time, right? <laughs> if you show them anything that has a dunder method, if you show them uh, anything special in Python, avoid list comprehensions, avoid <laughs> generators, don't go into any of that. But if they need a little help, get them over the curve. And so when you do this, you can now start to control uh, our turtle. I'm going to make some kind of, I don't know, we'll call this like a, a boat of some kind. You know, I'm a programmer. I'm not an, an artist. That's not why I'm up here. Uh, you can even start to do animation. And this is where it gets really fun. Because you can tell the turtle, hide yourself. I don't want to see the turtle. I don't want the turtle to trace things. Instead, I'm going to introduce a flag running that tells me whether or not to keep running the timer. I'm going to create a draw function. It clears the screen, draws the present, and then updates the screen. And it's going to do that all at once. So as long as we're running, schedule the draw function to run every 100 milliseconds. And as we do so, this is actually going to rotate our present. So here's where we're changing state. Left one changes the direction of the turtle. Every time we draw the present now, it rotates just a little bit. And this easily becomes a pattern for you. As you update game state according to mouse inputs and keyboard inputs, you can have a draw function go and repaint the whole screen. If this is exciting to you, as it is exciting to me, I hope you'll, you'll go online, search free Python games. I have a whole collection of these, pip install, free games. You can have a lot of fun with it. It gives you some utilities, like a vector data type, and it's really fun to play with. This is something that people uh, get really into. They start taking things apart. We have basic games like Snake. We've got this primitive Pac-Man. We've got some uh, projectile motion. There's two-player games like Connect Four. There's this terrible ripoff of Flappy Bird. Uh, <laughs> there's Memory. There's the old school Pong game. There's Simon Says, which is a one-player game. Tic-tac-toe, tiles. All of these are less than 100 lines of Python code. It's really easy to play with. It works really well with idle. Life is a zero-player game, so if someone doesn't even want to play, that's available <laughs> to you as well. So I hope you'll check these out. Give the gift of Python this holiday season. Thank you. Woo!